Hi, welcome to the new section. And in this video, I'm going to I am going to talk about how you're going to configure the virtual lecture and what are the different uh, things that you need to con uh, that you need uh, for configuring the virtual lecture. So this is for the people who are teaching the online courses. Uh, firstly, we have LCMS, LMS, uh, two types of systems. And in the LMS, we have three different types of lectures. One is media lecture where you upload the PowerPoint slides or the documents or the ebooks. And the one is classroom lecture uh, and one is virtual lecture. So for this thing, we need uh, we need an application. That's a virtual lecture application. So let's see the configuration steps and what are the things that we need to configure these things. So first, let me go to the de my desktop uh, and then I will install this application JSON client. Uh, you must shut down the browser. So I'm just shutting down the browser because it's going to complete this application. So once uh, I install this application, I'll just go to the browser. So once the application is loaded, uh, you can just uh, change the language. And then I'm just, uh, this is normal. Like once you install the application, you know the basically these things like uh, LCMS, LMS. LCMS is like how you add the resources and uh, what are the things that are, uh, like you can pause the previous videos if you don't know how to add the resources or how to use up, how to create the courseware and all those things. In the LMS, so you know the, uh, so let me log into the LMS and show you how you can able to access this uh, application. So once you log into the LMS uh, with your user ID and password, So we are going to get uh, the courses that you enrolled for this current semester. So I'm going to the programming tool and here you can see three different types uh, by weekly basis, virtual lecture and the semester things. So first thing is you need to organize all these weeks. Uh, you need to organize the roadmap uh, based on whenever you are the virtual lecture and all those things. So let me just configure one virtual lecture for you and then we can see how uh, so I'll just make sure that uh, you have updated the syllabus, evaluation planner and lesson planner. Syllabus is whatever you, uh, that you have teaching. Evaluation planner, normally how much you're going to assign the number of marks uh, and the lesson planner by weekly basis. So let me just configure one virtual lecture. So once I click on the virtual lecture, just click on this uh, add button. So I'm just saying uh, title anything, introduction. So what you're going to teach and the start date and time. So at what point maybe today I have the virtual lecture from 9 to 11. So I'll just configure date, time. So it's 21 minutes. And till what time? It's 23. And if, if you are going to give the assign the grade, yes or no, so it's just an attendance and entrance accessibility time. So, uh, so attendees should come before at how many minutes they should be before the virtual lecture time. So I'll just give 10 minutes and uh, let me just configure one more time. The, so let me go ahead and install this one. Uh, like uh, I just put it three and so uh, so I'll just change the end date also. So I'll just uh, remove this end date. And then, so I'll just put 21, so nine o'clock tomorrow. I'm just scheduling the lecture and the grade, if you want to give access, entrance accessibility time is 10 minutes before the virtual lecture time. And description, if you want to add anything and the attachment, you need to add the attachments before you need to add, you need to put all the PPTs that are there. Suppose if I'm using lab manual or ebook uh, or uh, PPTs, anything that is there, just click on add resource and everything it will be shown. Just click on the submit. So once these are there and su substitute in shutter. So if you're going to uh, make a substitute, just click on S. And replay button is for the students to view, view if they want to see it back, uh, if they want to see the replay, uh, if they want to see the video again. And notification is by sending email. SMS is not working, so you can send email, message, or push message. So both, all these three things you can just do. 
and you can I'll just remove because this is programming too and click on save so I'll just uh, I need to use some kind of thing I'll just email so after you add this one uh, let me go to the LMS so click on the LMS and click on the programming tool and click on the virtual ledger text click on the access test so first we are going to test it how this virtual ledger is going to work and it's going to load up this uh, Curix video conference and the agent It's just updating all the DLL files and all the resources that are needed for you know to run this application. Just wait for a few seconds. Sometimes the application doesn't start automatically. So what we have to do is we have to restart the computer once after you download the file. Sometimes if you are getting an error, like if it is closing up, just make sure that you update the Visual C++ redistribution package 2005 version. So make sure you do these things. Uh, sometimes the browser also issues. So you can use Firefox or um updated uh, chrome so now it has been updated just uh, make sure that you check the speakers because for this one they, they need to make you need to make sure that you configure the speaker so and then make make sure that you use a, a volume and uh, microphone thing Uh, because the application is loading for the first time and you can see the users that are there so since uh, the user in the users panel you can see and once you get this application make sure that you click on the present because and once you click on the present you can see here the charting there are three types of buttons this is presenter area this is where whatever the slides that you have uh, the files that you have for this lecture it will show up here whenever the virtual lecture is there what are the resources that you have and this is uh, you have the four tabs one is document one is whiteboard whiteboard is something if you want to explain them like uh, how this uh, application or you want to simulate by showing them how this application is going to work like that and video we don't use it normally so and the sharing if you want to share the desktop or anything like that Suppose you, I want to share my desktop, I can just click on desktop sharing. But what I can do is I want to share the PowerPoint slides with the people there uh, with the attendees they are viewing. In the user section, we have panel and we have attendees. In the panel, it will show up your name, whoever is the uh, instructor. In the attendees, it will show up the in, uh, students list. And here you can, this is a global chart where you can able to chart with the students. And the students have any queries, they can able to, they can able to post it in, through the charting section. So in the application sharing, so once I click the start, it will ask what type of application you're going to share. Since I have the PPT, I'm just, uh, but that application, you need to open it in the window. So I want to share the PowerPoint, just click on OK. So once I click on the PowerPoint, it will go to the PowerPoint and you can just explain them the slides, whatever you have in, in your course. So here we have four different types of buttons. One is stop sharing. After you finish this, after you finish the PowerPoint, you can just click on the stop sharing. You can annotate. Annotate is nothing but you want to redraw. You want to explain them clearly with the pen or pencil, something like that. Desktop sharing. If you want to uh, share the desktop with the with the attendees, application sharing, and the area sharing. If you want to share a certain area within the this application. So I'll just stop the sharing. Then it comes back to the application just when I click on the exit sharing and here also you can create a lot of options are there so here uh, in the device manager if you have some audio problem or uh, video problem you can just uh, audio problem or if the video is not going to work you can just check it in the options here and the create quiz you have two different types of quizzes you can just while going with the uh, with the lecture you can able to create the questions and then the students can able to view the answers also. So one is yes or no or multiple choice. In the yes or no, there will be only two options. In the multiple choice, only one option, but they'll be giving six options out of six options. Uh, 
and they, after they participate in the quizzes uh, quiz they can able to view the results also and once you save all the quiz questions you need to publish it in order to see but while you are preparing the quiz the attendees cannot able to view so i just uh, reset and then screen capture so if you just click on the screen capture it will be saved the image will be saved here and these are all the self explanation tools color tool align with these are all annotation tools that you use in the whiteboard or when you are explaining in a document or something like that so here the document in the document section it will show whatever the files that you created from the lcms it will be shown up here so that's a pretty much basic information that you need to start this application